So hello and welcome to another episode of Wiki Weekends, the series where myself, your co-host Carl Smallwood, and my ever illustrious co-host Lucas Holland, who's just off camera, hello there, take a wiki entry from across the lengths and breadths of the internet and discuss it at length because it's fun. So today, Lucas, we're talking about a character from a game that I really like, but I've only ever really had the the the, the heart to play through properly once or twice. Would you like to hazard a guess at what that game is? Um, if it's of a similar ilk to me, maybe it's a character from one of the Last of Us games. It's not from the Last of Us, no. It's a game that we played on stream, if that helps. We played with our friend Charlie, and then our friend Joe joined in for a little bit. Um, oh, yes, okay. We played through Undertale together. Yes, my favourite character from Undertale. Undying the Undying. So far away, Lucas, uh, what do you remember or recall about the character of Undyne from the video game Undertale? The, essentially, they are the true hero of the story. They're the hero of the story, yes. And I guess people out there who are unfamiliar um, with Undertale, go play Undertale. You can buy it for about £5. It's available on most places where you can play video games. My advice, if you're going to play Undertale, um, don't play it and stream it. Because <laughs> uh, Undertale has a rather infamous and well-earned reputation online for having an incredibly, I'll be diplomatic here, dedicated fan base who have a very mm. specific idea of how the game should be played. And for anyone unfamiliar with the series, it's described in the description you get on the page where you can go buy it as it is an RPG where you don't have to fight anybody. And the game commits to that, and there are multiple paths through the game. But to a lot of fans, the only true path is to play through the game as a pacifist, and then as a true pacifist, because you have to complete the game twice. And there are multiple abandoned playthroughs of this game out there by a multitude of content creators, big and small, who started the game and then stopped playing the game because they weren't aware of the idea of playing through the as a pacifist, just played it the normal way you play an RPG of fighting enemies for XP and stuff like that, and then got so inundated with hate mail and angry messages from fans of Undertale for playing it the wrong way that they abandoned that playthrough. At that point, are you actually a fan of Undertale? And yeah, and here's what really frustrates me about it of Undertale is so genius. I'm going to spoil the game now, so if you've had your warning, it's been out for a while, I highly recommend going to play it, and even if I spoil it, the experience is still worth it. Undertale has this fantastic ending, where if you play through the game as a normal RPG, you get to the end and you meet the character of Sam, the, uh, 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 and he'll tell you, oh, you've been collecting, like, you know, experience points and love, which they tell you is like, um, oh, it's your level of experience. Like, no, at the end of the game, they say, well, love is level of violence. And they reveal to you that, like, <laughs> you are a monster. And every enemy you kill to get stronger was wholly unnecessary to the game. And yeah. an experience a lot of people who played the game had, myself included, when I first played through that game, is realising that, immediately rebooting the game and doing a playthrough, and not killing anything. And that is where the normal experience is meant to lie, is that it's you go into the game assuming it's, just, it's, it's just a normal RPG. RPG, and you just play the game like a regular RPG, and you kill enemies, and then, oh, the twist happens at the end, and that encourages you to try something like a pacifist. And playthrough. you go back through because you feel bad that you realise you didn't have to actually kill anything, and the game is completely different if you don't. And mm -hmm. it, it reminds me a little bit of, Joe, that moment in like Iron Man 2, like Don Cheadle walks in and says, yeah, I'm War Machine, I'm here, let's get over it. And mm -hmm. every fan at home's like, ah, it's because he, he replaced Terrence <laughs> Howard. I know, I know why he said that. It's like yeah. that for Undertale of. They are so obsessed with that moment and how much they enjoyed that moment that 
they rob other people of experiencing it because the emotional impact on them of finding out that the pacifist run is the only way through the game where you don't have to hurt anybody. It's just so much and they can't let people experience it. It's like, remember when you were playing through Breath of the Wild and Tears of the Kingdom, Lucas, and you had a few people in your chat who just constantly kept going, oh, I can't wait for you to see this. Yeah. And yeah. you had to be like really, really diplomatic of like, I know you like the game, please stop trying to spoil it. So I'm not going to spoil it, but I think you'll really enjoy what comes up next. And you're like, that's spoiling it. Yeah. Undertale's like, like that. In people's brains, a lot of the time they think that they're trying to be like, you know, clever about it. And they're trying to, you know, avoid actually saying the words that are the spoiler. But for example, letting me know that like, there is something about to come up, or there's a twist at the end of Undertale. Mm -hmm. That is inherently a spoiler in itself. And it's a, it's a victim of its own success, in a way. And we experienced that when we played through on a stream. We did a full playthrough of Undertale together on stream, and you noticed it in the chat as we were getting up to boss fights and stuff. People were like, do you know if you do this in this boss fight, this happens? And I was like, I know I've played the game you know, through a few times. I'm aware. I've read, you know, I've wiki dived and I found out all the dumb stuff that can happen, so I can show Lucas and Charlie it. And they kept saying, "Oh, but did you know?" Yes, I know. But also, but Lucas doesn't know that. Stop ruining it for him. Yeah. <laughs> and it's just constantly because they love the game so much, they can't help but spoil it. And it's like, but if you love the game so much, why would you want to rob other people of the experience you had playing it for the first time? I like as well how I said the thing of. Um, we're gonna get this spider donut for later, and there's a guy in chat going, "Hang on to the spider donut." <laughs> as if it wasn't clear. I'm trying not to spoil Lucas too much. Yeah. Like, I get that people like this game, but please don't try and spoil it ahead of time. I have played the game before. I know. finished the game. I have not. I've, I literally haven't even got this far. Yeah. That's the thing is, a lot of them are genuinely, like, They're trying genuine to fans. be, like, just fans and want to share those moments with other people. But the problem is by being so upfront and in your face and it's like, you know, spoilery about it as well, is that, as you say, they're robbing people of that experience and almost being like gatekeepers instead. Yeah, but, you know, let's bring, we're talking today strictly about Undyne. So, we have a mm -hmm. quote from Undyne here. Screw it! Why should I tell that story when you're about to die? Nyaaah! And obviously the game's not voiced, but you can picture every character in that game's voice just on, like, the little... Sound cues like Sansa's voice it was like, uh, 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 as he talks. He's so good. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's so iconic. And then we have Undyne here. Some basic biographical information here. Undyne, the heroine that never gives up. Speaking of which, I've got that. She's the John Cena. <laughs> Hustle, loyalty, respect. Never give up the Undyne story. This is a real as well. This is a, a present from a friend. This is my lunch, my officially branded... John Cena, hustle, loyalty, respect, never give up lunchbox. Great, because a former decorated member of the United States Marine Corps needs your support. And his name is John Cena! He's gonna get in the ring and put boots to asses you? this Are weekend. you kidding me right now? WWE Are you kidding me right now? I can't even handle this. I can't not handle this. That was a Christmas present from a friend of mine. I respect it. So yes, he's also known as Undying the Undying, specifically in the genocide route. Strongfish91 on Undertale <laughs> Internet. Her first appearances in the Waterfall and her relationships are Alphys as a love interest, Asgore Dreamer, friend and mentor, Papyrus, who is a trainee and friend, and then multiple other characters. But the only one that really matters is um, uh, Asgore Dreamer, Papyrus, and Alphys. And then mm. her lay motif is Undying. And a leitmotif for people who are unfamiliar with the term is a recurring musical theme or element present within a story. And Undertale makes masterful use of the lemo motif, and the music is fucking phenomenal. And there's so many just like bits of story that are gotten across to you purely via the music. 
Yeah, and, you know, Toby Fox, just shout out in terms of, you know, the entire game, but the musical elements and just, like, the music they come up with in general, like, even the music that they've contributed to, like, the Pokemon series best, now. Best, best track in the entire game, where it's like, oh, Toby Fox, <laughs> yeah. I'm going to make a, a song for um, uh, one of the Pokemon games, and it's the hardest Pokemon's gone since the trumpets of Ruby and Sapphire. <laughs> It's like, as well in Scarlet and Violet, they did like, just, I think it was like one of the field themes, and it's like, why does like, the theme for just being in an open field go so hard? Yeah, and you'll hear like, elements of Undyne's theme all throughout the game, remixed and changed, depending on like, her battle theme is remixed, and obviously you can fight her as on a good playthrough where you don't kill her, you befriend her, or uh, when she becomes true Undyne, Undyne the Undying, <laughs> and you get like, the badass remix, which is... Her, not her theme song, that's your boss music. Yeah. Because you're yeah. the villain in that bit, but... We've got like, some more information right here. So, profile, appearance. Undyne is a Piscean anthropomorphic monster. She has blue scales and a long red ponytail. She has red and blue fins on the side of her head and a pair of sharp yellow protruding teeth. She wears red eyeshadow and has an eye patch over her left eye. And as well, she just starts in the armor and looks super badass. And then, like, just the fact that starts with the armor, with the spears and the spear magic. And then mm -hmm. later in the game, where it's like, oh, casual Friday on dining, like the leather jacket. <laughs> and it's so good. It's so it's good. Like, oh, uh, I'm getting ready for my date. And it's like the contrast between, yeah. Full armor, night undying, and then just casual day. Not, and it all makes perfect sense within the game as you're playing it. It's like yeah, it's an experience I would not want to rob somebody of, and I question why Undertale fans do. This is off such a bad start, isn't it? it I is, can't yeah. let her see me dating you or go. Because well, uh, she's the one I actually give a shit about. No, no. <laughs> Look, casual oh, Friday. Look. <laughs> isn't that so fucking good? That's a rad design. Yeah. Casual, and that's why I wanted. Do you know when people were saying put Sans in under uh, Sans in Smash? I was mm -hmm. like, no, put Undyne in Smash <laughs> for that costume. Because mm -hmm. so I remember when we were playing it, and I was like, cause I did the thing. I got a little bit sad. I was like, okay, there's a good bit coming up. But like, you know, because mm -hmm. we're friends, and it's like we were there. You know, it's on a stream. You know, like you know, the expectations of like you know, you want a certain reaction from a person when it comes to this of sort course. of thing. And I remember just telling you about the Asgore fight specifically, when both me and Charlie are like, Lucas, you're not ready. I'm like, what do you mean yeah, I'm not ready? As and we're then... walking up the corridor and you guys are like, oh man. <laughs> the music stops, you walk up a corridor and there's this huge fucking hulking dude is there and he's like, oh, well, it's a nice day. Okay. And then he just destroys the mercy button. <laughs> it's a nice day to fucking die. Humor. It was nice to meet you. Oh no. He's Goodbye. Nice. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck you. Just delete the option to run. Yeah, Lucas. It's quite literally no mercy here, Lucas. Oh my what? fucking god. <laughs> what do you do? <laughs> And it's like, oh my god, what the fuck? And speaking of like, oh my god, what the fuck? In regular combat, you know, she's just she's in the armor. She's pretty scary, but, you know, there's there's elements of humor there. But Undyne has another element to her that few players see. And the players that do see it don't like it. Because Undyne the Undying, which is her, like, genocide boss root form, is mm -hmm. so fucking strong, almost no one can beat her. She's that good. Oh my god. So Undyne, whenever she persists through determination after her HP reduced to zero, her pupils turn white, her sclera turn black, she no longer has an eye patch. Her newly revealed empty eye socket emits a flashing light in the shape of a spear. Her hair spikes at the end like a trident and her thin rays become more pointed and ridgy. And, oh, more rigid and pointy. She also appears to have donned a new set of darker colored armor with soles and hearts on her chest plate and new white gloves which have spikes protruding from them. So I wouldn't have seen this version then, right? Because no, so. we did a pacifist run. So basic, again, some background stuff. Like I'm probably going to get elements of it wrong. Like Undertale fans, just go back to what I said at the beginning. Don't ruin it for people. Like, don't let your enthusiasm for the series ruin it for everybody else. But 
there is a, a thing in the Undertale universe known as determination. And that is... Do you know you like go to a save point? It's like, you're filled with determination. But Lucas, knowing that one day this mouse might get the confidence to come and get this cheese. That it fills me with, with determination. Not cheese. <laughs> just... Oh, welcome to just Millennial the character. Are you ready? That's like mm. an actual quantifiable thing in that universe. And your character has so much determination that they can persist after death, which is why when you die, you just go back to a save point because you were filled with determination. Mm -hmm. One of the only other characters in the game who is able to persist after death through sheer determination is Undying the Undying. Because on a genocide route, every creature you kill up to Undying the Undying dies in one hit. The story gets really dark on a genocide route of like characters that are like really fun and happy, like Alphys, for example, who's just like, oh, mm -hmm. she's the, the dinosaur scientist who helps you in the quiz with like the weird robot. In the dating simulation video game, Mew Mew Kissy Cutie, what's the Mew favorite food? A lot is Twitch. Look, it's, look at his Twitch, like, oh, I know this one, let me tell you the answer. In the background of the genocide run, she's helping the monsters escape from you as Undyne makes, like, you know, a suicidal last stand against a creature no one can defeat. Holy shit. And she dies in one hit. Like every other enemy. But then, you see her go down and she gives you the big villain speech. Not villain speech, hero speech. I'm saying villain. You're the villain. She gives the hero mm -hmm. speech. She's like, you know what? Fuck this. If I... I don't care anymore. I just want to kick your ass. And just like, she fades <laughs> back in with a new form and like just, just, the wind goes and you get the piano interlude coming. It's like, oh, she's not down yet. Yeah, that's cool. I just... That's the thing is, Undertale, obviously, like, you know, anyone that's played through the game knows how meta mm -hmm. it is. Yes. And, yeah, I just love the idea of, like, you were the villain all along and just the game, like, absolutely breaking your brain through it. Yep, it's like personality. She's passionate about everything that she does, whether it be battle or making spaghetti. <laughs> <laughs> that's like when you make spaghetti with Undyne and she just destroys her kitchen. And it's like God. the same game where Undyne is like the absolute arbiter of like progress where it's like you're not getting past. Mm -hmm. Like just like she just stands there and has like one of the best themes on like Meg Un everyone who says Megalovania, I think um uh, Battle Against a True Hero is the best song in the game. And it's it's her song. I'm not sure I've heard that one, but that, it's the remix of her battle music, like Spear of Justice. Yeah, yeah. But like it's so, so good. And I mean it's just, it's really hard to contend with the song that got presented to the Pope, Carl. It's hard, but I, I think, I do think, um, uh, like, Battle Against a True Hero is my favourite song in the game. And mm -hmm. you go from, like, the battle that kicked everyone's ass and made them restart the entire game to go do, like, you know, a pacifist or neutral run. Compare that to, like, when, like, um, uh, Papyrus tricks her into going on a date with you. He's like, okay, I have to go now. And just <laughs> <laughs> Scott Pilgrim's out the window. Yeah. Oh, but Lucas, whoopsie doopsie, I just remembered I have to go to the bathroom. You two have fun. <laughs> <laughs> That is so fucking top tier. It's so good. Which says, like, among, among other things, she loves to help others and mentors various characters like Shiren and Papyrus in various skills. She dislikes puzzles but loves japes, enjoys playing the piano, collecting weaponry, primarily swords, and anime. And that's where you get the best joke. Is anime real? Yes, <laughs> you, it is. Her brain breaks when she finds out anime is not real, and you can, like, tell her that anime is real. Anime is real, Carl. I don't know what you're on. Is anime... <laughs> <laughs> you know what? Lucas! Let, let Undyne no. live the beautiful life. Let's let chat decide 
One for yes, two for no. Is anime real? Of all the encountered monsters, Undyne possesses the most determination. So much so that she melts before her death, implying that her body cannot handle the sheer amount of determination present within it. So, like, do you actually in the genocide run, like, kill, kill Undyne? You kill her, yeah. But, like, she's the only, yeah. one of the only characters who doesn't die in one hit. Mm -hmm. She has so much determination that she, like, you know, just comes back from the death in the same way that you can to get, have one last chance at killing you. That's cool. Yeah, I like that. But, yeah, just... I mean, I feel, like, really bad because I know the nice Undyne, and mm -hmm. I'm like, yeah, that's cool that you can kill her, but also I'm just like, but I don't want her to die. No one does, but that's the thing. It's like the genocide run has so much cool shit in there, but, I you know, speaking mm -hmm. of which... Anyone watching this is familiar with, like, you know, the base game. But go play it. Like, she's a she's a great character. Like, the date with um, Undyne is one of the best parts of the entire game. And it only happens in, like, the true pacifist run. Where you got to go mm. date her and you go with the fucking garbage dump. <laughs> yeah, and for anyone intimidated by the idea of, like, having to do two full runs, like... You can complete it It's not a full run playthrough, like, no. the second time. Just it's do like, one good run, then there's, like, a mini epilogue that takes, like, an hour. I was gonna say, it's, like, an epilogue, yeah. Where you go and find, like, you know, some secret shit that went down, and you have to go on a date with Alphys, where, Pap where Papyrus and her turn up, and it's just... It, 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 it's great, and I would not want to rob anyone of playing the game and experiencing the game for the first time. Yeah! <laughs> Lucas, just look at what is happening on screen right now. Lowest rise. This is the same game where you can, like, murder everything and Undyne is, like, this fucking monster who suplexes, oh. like, boulders and shit. And during the genocide, one has mentioned, like, you strike her down in one hit, but she does that in protection of another person. So, like, you go to kill this character called Monster Kid. And when you, like, examine them, it says, looks like free XP. <laughs> and Undyne jumps in the way. And that act of just like, no, fuck you, just fills her with so much that she's the only other character who can do it. And I just love the idea of calling anything free XP. It's like one of my favourite insults. Mm -hmm. Just like, you look like free XP. I think Undyne, she just takes that hit. And like she's super strong. She's one of the strongest characters um, physically in the game, besides Sans, who has like control over like time and space. I still just remember I'd never played through or seen any Undertale like actual gameplay. I'd just known about it in the periphery, mm -hmm. and then our friend just like passed me a switch and went, "Look at this fight," and just sent me up against Sans immediately. It, I was like, "What is this it game?" Is a really great meta moment as well, where Sans just says. Well, I never understand why, like, you know, they don't do their strongest attack in the first turn. And just does his best attack in the first turn. <laughs> and it's like, yeah! It's real fucking good. I also love as well that the genocide run is like basically it's a deconstruction of um, like you know the the, the genre, and mm -hmm. you go through the entire game as a completely overpowered monster, and it doesn't feel fair like to the people that you're fighting against. And then the Sans fight, there's so many people online saying, well, the Sans fight's not fair because he can, for example, he can attack you when you're in the menus. <laughs> yeah. And it's like, well, that's not fair. It's like, well, is it fair what you did? Mm hmm. And it's like that meta thing. Like, people say, oh, it's not fair. Sans can attack you in the cutscenes and like, you don't get like iframes on your attacks. Like, well, it's not fair that you were like picking on enemies that were like, you know, 15 levels below you. How does it feel? And that's something that Sans says to you. like, how does it feel? Like, you feel your sins washing over you. It's like, you know, kind of, you know, commentary on a lot of RPGs, as you say, but it reminds me of, like, the person who, like, leveled up their starter Pokemon before, like, the first gym and then, you know, steamrolls through and then just gets to the top of the Mount Silver and reds, like, dot, dot, dot. It's yep. like, wait, what? Like, oh, like, 88 level Pikachu comes out, like, so I think, how just does it ready feel? to 
burn you down. But I love all those, like, you could find those forum posts, but I can't beat Sans. Like, it's, it's super cheap and not fair. It's like, yeah, because it's not fair. Like, imagine now what the enemies felt like fighting you. That's what the game's about. It's like, you know, a game where you can befriend everybody. And it's really meta that in that way. Sunder lion felt. Just the little dandelion was like, please spare me, and you just cut, cut it down in one. Yeah, you had to kill Flowey, though. He's a bad one. <laughs> which is like, another we, great moment, we don't I guess. Know that. We could just talk in general about the boss fights in the game, which are all awesome. Even, like, mm -hmm. the random DLC one they added that's not really consequential to the game, like Miss Moffat. Is oh, the yes, spider yeah. and like one of the best sprites I've ever seen. <laughs> and the mm -hmm. theme song's amazing. And like the mini game you have, it's like the rhythm action mini game where you gotta run away from spiders and then the little little pixel spiders that come in <laughs> and give you sights. Mm. Like, listen to that fucking song though. Oh, oh god. god. I'm just flexing on them. We've got to flex on the spiders. Good fight, it's a good fight this one. And all the how the music. how terrifying is that? All of them clapping along. Yeah, <laughs> with all their little. Do you know that you see them? Oh god, he likes to clap with. See, that's the thing for me is like Undertale. I know it's going for a certain aesthetic. I'm not the biggest fan of the way it looks, mm -hmm. but um, I know it's very intentional. Um, but like the. Just the music always makes up for it. So Lucas. Oh man, that's strong. What a strong fucking design Muffet has. Yeah. That's real good. That is so good in it. We mentioned Undying, we mentioned Sans, we mentioned Asgore, we mentioned Moffat. We can't not mention just the final fight like Asriel Dreamer. Where it's just like, <laughs> oh, this is where it turns into a proper RPG. And it's like, he uses, like, Mega Sonic Death Ultra Flare. <laughs> and just fights, like, the Rainbow Cannon. The fuck you got? Oh, oh, oh. Yeah! Oh, no god. damage! Oh, God. And then you've got Ultra Mega Secret Super Boss of just Flowey. Yep. Defeat and me. it's like, oh, I'm, I'm just going to send the entire game against you. It's mm -hmm. like, oh. But then, like, you win because, you're like, you know, you make your friends remember that you're f they're friends with you. And it's so good. But we got, you know, speaking of making friends with the characters, there's some trivia about Undying. So, obviously, if anyone's going to be your friend, you'd like to know some trivia about them. So, when attempting to name the fallen human Undying, the response becomes, get your own name. <laughs> there was a bunch of little things like that. There was like a bunch of like Easter eggs on there. Like if you try and name your character certain things, you'll get little bonuses or Easter eggs pop up. Mm -hmm. Undying Again, is consistently shown to be right-handed. After scoping the protagonist after Papyrus's report, she handles her spear in her left hand. Undying is the only determined monster who can control her determination, unlike the amalgamates. So do you know those weird creatures you find in the lab? Their experiments with determination where they inject monsters yes. with it and they just melt and turn into monsters. Yeah, it's like Undying seemingly the only one other than you that can like actually control it. Yeah, multiple characters' deaths can alter the dialogue that occurs in the pre-battle monologue by Undying. Papyrus's death supersedes all other pre-battle dialogue and changes her speech the most, although the characters Snowdrake and Shiren, or any other members of the Snowden canine, canine unit, will um, uh, prompt some dialogue, but Papyrus supersedes it all. And I think the Papyrus fight is the one that actually teaches people that you don't have to kill anything. Because here's a fun right. fact about the Papyrus fight. Papyrus will never kill you. Mm -hmm. like, you can never die during the Papyrus fight. And if you die to him multiple times, he just lets you pass. And that's like one of those, uh, same with like Toriel. Where Toriel will never intentionally hit you. And in fact, if you deliberately get hurt and killed, there is like a super rare animation of a sprite going, oh no, because she accidentally killed you, the player. Because she's not trying to hurt you. Right, okay. Same thing with like later in the game. It's like again, like lemo teeth within like music and gameplay. Um, when mm. uh, Asgore uses fire magic, the fire magic is never directly aimed at you, because that's the magic that his wife would use, and his wife's magic never hurt you either. It's never deliberately aimed at you, but you can still be hit by it. Little bits like that where it's you know bringing elements of the story into the combat. I do, I do really love. It, it's just so good, yeah. And it's like uh, just you can write an entire thesis, and I think I mentioned it when I, we did the Asgore fight of just his sprite alone mm -hmm. like there's like you could just everything about his sprite's design to how he fights to how he moves to the music to what he says in the preamble and that's just like one boss fight in the game and then there's like so many different elements of the game are all combined within that one boss fight that are like you know some subtle some not some inferred some directly stated but it's just it's and it's then you look at it it's like black and white sprites first of all Asgore won't look us in the eye 
Yeah, he, he just wants to get the murder like, done. His, his sprite never looks you in the eye. Oh god. Like he does not want to. Look, he does not want to fight you, but he knows he has to. Hmm. Second of all, like just his song has Toriel's theme in it. Yeah. Uh, okay. His theme has Toriel's theme in it, but Toriel's theme does not have his theme in it. Because shows it. she's abandoned him. Yeah, but he's not abandoned her. And it's just like, oh, Sir Lucas, what should we do? Yeah, for sure. And I do think uh, I just wanted to mention like another game that maybe won't hit in that sense, mm-hmm. but is another very fun meta game that yes. maybe a people are fans of Undertale should just go check out Inscription. Um, it's not similar in terms of like gameplay. It's not an RPG. It's more like a deck builder and roguelite and mm-hmm. stuff. But it just takes that weird meta deep dive in the same way that Undertale does throughout. And yeah, yeah, I'd highly recommend it to someone who got a kick out of the meta stuff of Undertale. What's well, Undertale? It's the deconstruction of the RPG genre. It's, it's fantastic, and there's like there's so many little like character moments. Like for example, Undyne uh, <laughs> dislikes cold food and has a hot fridge. A hot fridge? She has a fridge that keeps things hot. Don't think that's going to be very healthy. No. And he was like cooking like pasta with fire magic. I mean, that's true. <laughs> How will we pound? We pound strong, Carl. Of course we do. Undying. The Undying is the only boss in the entirety of the genocide route that cannot be defeated in a single hit. If anyone's wondering, wait a minute. But you mentioned like Sam's and isn't he like the hardest boss in the game? He is. He only has one HP. You just can't hit him. You can't hit him. And again, that's that thing of like, he's the only boss in the entire game that does that. He's the only enemy in the entire game that can dodge your hit. And again, it's like, well, it's, he even says it's not fair, right? It's not fair that you can't <laughs> hit me. How does it feel? Um, Undyne is one of the only... Undyne is the only protagonist when trapped by Flowey's Vines during the true pacifist ending, who is the only who keeps trying to break free. Everyone else just takes it. Fuck. Oh! No! Oh, Lucas, our friends. Flowey gathered us all here together today. And then the final bit of trivia is that she's the only character who has a boss fight in all three routes. Genocide, neutral, and true pacifist. Mm. So, like, yeah. Yeah, it's very interesting to me because I've only done the pacifist run of or only seen it. It's, like, really interesting that some boss fights just don't happen. I highly recommend people go play Undertale for themselves. Maybe we'll cover another character another day. But for now, it's time to take our leave and say thank you for watching. Like, comment, subscribe, all that good stuff, and go out there and have the day you deserve. <laughs>